it's almost as if people on ground zero here in Kiev say that these are punitive strikes on Kharkiv to send across a message to entire Ukraine and attempt to break their morale, which the people insist will clearly not happen. We bring you this report. Attack on a military academy. Police headquarter bombed. School hit by a shell. City council under attack. Unrelenting shellings and missile attacks through the night and day. Kharkiv is battered, raised and bleeding profusely. Russian invaders moved in for the kill inside Kharkiv on day 7 of the raging war. Back-to-back -back attacks on a police headquarter and a military academy brought the second largest city, Kharkiv, to its knees. After non-stop attacks from Russian forces, Kharkiv streets wore a deserted look. No people, no people, no cars, no soldiers, mm -hmm. no tanks. Yeah, it's totally empty. Empty, empty here. It's Pushkinska Street. Pushkinska Street. The military academy that was hit by Russian rockets was on fire for over nine hours. <laughs> Russian airborne troops landed in Kharkiv today and started immediate offensive on the streets of the city. Kharkiv mayor claimed that at least 21 people were killed and over 110 wounded in the initial hours of Wednesday attacks. As the attacks get more and more intense and bloodied, foreign students are being evacuated from Kharkiv. Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city, has seen some of the worst fighting and aerial attacks in past few days. With ferocious Russian missile attack taking out a government building, the heart-stopping images were captured on camera. Ukrainian MP Maria Lonova confirmed to India today that ruthless Russian troops are conducting war crimes like targeting hospitals and killing children. Uh, the hospitals are, uh, were bombed yesterday mm. and uh, you know also that the kids were killed and uh, yes. uh, uh, in the evening there were a rocket bomb. Uh, there were a rocket uh, bomb, uh, so very strategic and very hard. So the, Putin started to use uh, forbidden, uh, forbidden uh, rockets mm. uh, and uh, uh, that is why it is so important uh, to stop him. Kharkiv is Ukraine. Kharkiv decided not to be a part of Moscow Federation. Putin expected that Kharkiv will become one more People's Republic as the fake republics of uh, uh, so-called uh, LNR and DNR in, Don in, in Donbass. But Kharkiv withstands Moscow aggression. Therefore, this is kind of revenge for it. On Tuesday, Russian attacks on Kharkiv had killed 21-year-old Indian student Naveen Shekharappa. As the sun sets on Kharkiv, will it be the first major Ukrainian city to fall? Bureau report, India Today. Kiev is bracing for an imminent Russian strike. Whether these will be airstrikes or missile strikes, people are preparing. Trenches are being dug up roadblocks erected, barricades being set up and it's not just the Ukrainian army but every Ukrainian today is a warrior. That's exactly what people on ground tell India today as we spoke to a cross-section of people now depending on only themselves, only each other to protect their country. We bring you an India Today exclusive ground report from Streifton, Kiev. A TV tower raised in a heart-stopping aerial strike.
Rescue workers rummaging through piles of mangled buildings, hoping against hope to find survivors. Once bustling neighborhoods devastated and burning for hours together after Russian troops rained fire from the sky. Amid the deaths, destruction and rubble, India today remains the last channel still reporting from Kiev, which is now a ghost city. Deep inside the devastating war zone, India today's Gaurav Savant spoke to civilian soldiers readying a last stand to resist invading Russians. We are at a picket, at a checkpoint and multiple such checkpoints have been set up to defend Kiev from the imminent Russian invasion and with me are members of this checkpoint defense team, what they have in their hands and look very closely, these are Molotov cocktails or petrol bombs being made right here. They're being made by the women and used by the men here. Uh, just with Molotov cocktails, how will you defend your neighborhood? How will you defend Kiev? They are not afraid. They are not afraid for Russians. They are not afraid. Even without weapons, without petrol bombs, they are ready for war. So they don't have any problem. Even they don't have any bomb or any weapon. A round of the city catches the images of ruin all around. You know, as we drive through the city, we are just trying to show you virtually every corner of Kyiv today because this is what the world is fearing, that there would be an attack on this city and that attack could happen anytime now. Um, ambulances on standby, hospitals on standby. Preeti, I also went to the church here and the church is now chipping in, uh, giving, giving food and shelter to refugees. The church is also pretty uh, preparing hospital beds. Church is preparing to look after people who may be injured in combat. Whether civilians or soldiers, we do not know. The hope that at least a religious institution, the 10th century church, will not be targeted either in artillery, grad, rocket or, or even missile fire. The city is witnessing unending, blaring air raid sirens followed by deafening roars of air attacks. Hit by one barrage of missiles and rockets after another. Russia struck the TV tower in Kiev on Tuesday that killed five people and wounded five more. TV channels across the country stopped broadcasting after the attack, aimed at crippling Ukraine's broadcast network. Earlier, Russia had issued a warning that it would strike Kiev's security service headquarters with high-precision weapons. Residents living close by were asked to flee immediately. How long can the Ukrainian capital and its small band of soldiers and residents resist the unsparing Russian onslaught? With Gaurav Savant and Rajesh Pawar, the only reporters still on the ground in besieged Kiev, Bureau report, India today. Another neighborhood in Kiev where people are preparing for the attack, looking for the nearest underground. Now, several European countries have pledged support to the government in Ukraine. It's day seven of the war and Moscow still hasn't succeeded in destroying Ukraine. Moscow still hasn't succeeded in either of its objectives. One, uh, change the regime of President Zelensky or demilitarize this nation. The people are fighting back and they're fighting hard. They require weapons. A large number of soldiers and militia that India today spoke to said they have the willpower but they require the Javelin anti-tank guided missiles, they require the Stinger surface-to-air missiles, they require a lot more arms and ammunition. Several European countries have promised them the arms and ammunition. It remains to be seen how quickly will those weapons and systems reach Ukraine. We are told that 70 pilots from Ukraine are on their way to Poland to acquire MiG-29 aircraft and Su-27 aircraft, both that they've flown in the past, but where are the airfields? Where is the ammunition? Where are the bombs? Several questions. Our next report attempts to bring you some answers.
As Russia bulldozes into key cities of Ukraine, the cry for help grows louder. Ukraine has made multiple appeals for NATO countries to step in with military aid. And help has now begun to flow in. Sweden is reversing its doctrine of not sending military aid to countries in conflict. They are all set to send 1,35,000 field rations, 5,000 helmets, 5,000 body shields and 5,000 anti-tank weapons to Ukraine. Germany has decided to go against its long-standing policy of not exporting weapons to war zones. Germany will send 1,000 anti-tank weapons and 500 Stinger missiles. Belgium has pledged 2,000 machine guns and 3,800 tons of fuel. The Czech government has sent machine guns, assault rifles, other light weapons and ammunition worth 188 million crowns or 8.57 million dollars. On Ukraine's request, Greece is sending defence supplies including two C-130 military transport planes which will carry supplies to Poland in a show of solidarity with the Ukrainian people. Portugal is also joining forces with the Western nations in dispatching help to Ukraine. Vests, helmets, night vision goggles, grenades and ammunition of various calibers will be sent by Portugal. Slovakia has so far provided humanitarian and material aid worth more than $19 million. Medical and military material including 120mm munitions, diesel and aviation fuel, air defence systems and anti-tank missiles. The Netherlands has agreed to Ukraine's request to rapidly ship 200 Stinger air defence rockets and 50 Panzerfaust III anti-tank weapons with 400 rockets. Turkey has sold Kiev several batches of Bayraktar TB2 drones, which it had in the past deployed against Russian-backed separatists in eastern Ukraine. The United States is all set to provide Ukraine new military equipment worth an additional $350 million. The US has also approved direct delivery of Stinger missiles to Ukraine. War cannot be fought without allies and Ukraine is now seeing some hope from Western nations. This, in fact, is the first time European Union nations are funding military aid to a country under attack. Bureau Report, India Today. Have the Ukraine operations been Russian President Vladimir Putin's strategic miscalculation, as some in the West argue? Has the operation not gone according to plan. For example, even on day seven, Russia is neither in control of Kharkiv, the second largest city, nor in control of Kiev. And the people are fighting back and hard. There are sanctions coming President Putin's way. There are major sanctions being imposed on Russia. Many say these will end up crippling Russia in the weeks and months ahead. Let's take a look at what Russia's battle plan probably was and where According to some analysts, has Russia gone wrong? The country of Ukraine putting up a fight back against the mighty Russians. With sheer grit and determination, Ukraine has held back Russian troops and an invasion that was expected to be a complete walkover for Kremlin. Many reports have suggested that Putin wanted a quick invasion. But that clearly hasn't happened, with many claims that the Russian army has already suffered huge casualties. Here are five reasons why Russian forces are struggling right now with their Ukraine takeover plan. Reason 1. Putin's secrecy. 
While things were simmering between NATO and Russia and war seemed inevitable, reportedly Putin played his cards close to his chest. I've taken the decision to conduct a special military operation. Its purpose is to protect people who have been subject to abuse and genocide by the Kyiv regime for eight years. And to do this, we will strive to demilitarize and denazify Ukraine. This announcement by Putin took his own generals by surprise, as the Russian president didn't divulge to anyone his war plans. While the secrecy could have been for strategic reasons, it reportedly led to a lack of preparation on ground. Reason 2. Lack of planning This is a mountain of damaged Russian vehicles in Bucha city of Ukraine. If Russia has the military advantage, how has this happened? And why has Russia suffered so many casualties? Russia has way more troops, way more advanced equipment and yet haven't managed to get the upper hand in urban warfare. The fact that Ukraine's internet services haven't been down yet is a telling indication. Reason 3. Overconfidence A Ukrainian stopping a Russian military convoy. Ukrainian President Zelensky standing his ground and refusing to back off. Ukrainian troops using all the equipment they have to fight back. Russia quite simply underestimated the enemy. With no military support from NATO, America or any other country, Putin perhaps anticipated things would be wrapped up very, very fast. But the war is still very much on, seven days and counting. Reason 4. Restrained air power. Yes, Russia has struck many targets from the skies, with precision airstrikes targeting key military installations. Experts have opined, however, that Russia is yet to use its full military might against Ukraine. And perhaps in the days to come, Putin may be forced to pull out all his arsenal to seal the deal for his country. Reason 5. Europe's response. Sanction after sanction by European countries is hitting Russia hard and it's evident in the ruble currency's massive drop in value. Add to that is Europe rallying behind Ukraine with expensive weapons like the Stinger anti-aircraft and Javelin anti-tank missiles also being offered to Ukraine. Russia's invasion so far hasn't happened as planned and Ukraine's full-fledged fight back was perhaps not anticipated. One thing is clear. This war has had huge military and political repercussions for Putin and his country. Bureau Report, India Today. US President Joe Biden in his maiden State of the Union address launched a frontal attack on the Russian President Vladimir Putin. He went to the extent of calling the Russian President a dictator. He spoke of the crippling sanctions that had been imposed on Russia, the steps that were being taken to arm Ukraine to support Ukraine. He also spoke about how Russia would pay a very heavy price for its operations, for its invasion of Ukraine. We bring you this report. He thought he could divide us at home in this chamber, in this nation. He thought he could divide us in Europe as well. But Putin was wrong. We are ready. We are united, and that's what we did. We stayed united. Amid a full-fledged war for Ukraine, U.S. President Joe Biden summarized view of the West on Russia. In his maiden State of the Union address to a joint session of the Congress on Wednesday morning, Biden claimed Vladimir Putin now stands globally isolated. Russia's Vladimir Putin sought to shake the very foundation of the free world, thinking he could make it bend to his menacing ways. But he badly miscalculated. He thought he could roll into Ukraine and the world would roll over. Instead, he met with a wall of strength he never anticipated or imagined. As Putin refuses to relent, Biden hit back with a crippling ban on the Russian planes from its airspace. 
He vowed to choke Russia's access to technology and sap its economic and military strength. I'm announcing that we will join our allies in closing off American airspace to all Russian flights, further isolating Russia and adding additional squeeze on their economy. Together, along with our allies, we are right now enforcing powerful economic sanctions. We're cutting off Russia's largest banks in the international financial system, preventing Russia's central bank from defending the Russian ruble, ruble, making Putin's $630 billion war fund worthless. We're choking Russia's access. A Russian dictator of fa- invading a foreign country has cost around the world. And I'm taking robust action to make sure the pain of our sanctions is targeted at Russian economy and that we use every tool at our disposal to protect American businesses and consumers. Biden, however, made sure to assert that the United States of America will not send its men to the war-ravaged country, but promised to protect every inch of the land of the Allies. Together with our allies, we're providing support to the Ukrainians in their fight for freedom. Military assistance, economic assistance, humanitarian assistance. We're giving more than a billion dollars of direct assistance to Ukraine and will continue to aid the Ukrainian people as they defend their country and help ease their suffering. Biden's punitive moves are sure to tighten the choke on Putin and reduce his elbow room. But will these statements by the US president be able to halt Putin as a formidable war machine that's been wrecking havoc in Ukraine for a week now. Bureau Report, India Today. As we drive through Kiev, one thing is very noticeable. People are going out of the city where men want to leave their families, they want to leave their children, their parents outside the city and then come back to join this resistance, to join this fight to defend Kiev, to protect Kiev and to ensure that Russia does not succeed. A quick break, back with lots more on this India Today special ground report that comes to you from Kiev. Stay with us. India's Operation Ganga has been intensified. There is a desperate effort to get children out, medical students out of Kharkiv, Sumi and other areas as quickly as possible. The government today issued an advisory asking children to leave Kharkiv by 1800 hours local time. And such is the desperation that hapless children are actually wondering how do they get out of Kharkiv and Sumi amidst intense firing and shelling, which sadly is only likely to intensify in the hours and days ahead. We bring you this report on the intensification of Operation Ganga, where the Indian Air Force 2 has now been roped in. I'm here to welcome you all back on behalf of every Indian. Welcome back home. Special flights bringing Indian stranded in war-torn Ukraine lands in New Delhi. Union Minister Smriti Rani welcomed the 218 passengers, mostly students, returning via Bucharest at the Delhi airport. Operation Ganga, launched by Narendra Modi government to bring back stranded Indians, is now in top gear. बहुत ज़्यादा खुशी हो रही है, बहुत ज़्यादा struggle करके आए हैं, और parents को देखा है तो बहुत ज़्यादा खुश हैं, बहुत ज़्यादा. I am from Bukovina State Medical University. IAS students helped us a lot, and the Indian Embassy was there also. So thank you so much, thank you so much to everyone, and yeah, we are so glad that we are landed safely here. Border cross करने मुझे दो दिन लग गया, बहुत मुश्किल से किया. For the parents here awaiting their loved ones, the rescue mission is a huge relief. The center has deployed four ministers to the neighboring states of Ukraine to oversee the evacuation efforts. Bharat ne apne char mantriyon ko bhi wahan par bhej diya hai. Sankat mein phase bhaartiyon ko jyada tezi se nikalne ke liye hamari sena 
वायु सेना को भी लगा दिया गया है अच्छा तुम्हें सुरक्षित था यूनियन मिनिस्टर ज्योतिरादित्य सिंधिया रीच बुक रेस्ट एज द स्पेशल एन वॉय टू द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट Sindhya interacted with Indian students awaiting their flights and assured them of safe return. Siret me teen flights me kal la raha hu Sucheva. To bachcho ko yahan aane ki zarurat nahi hai. Sucheva se hi hum log India ko rawana kar lenge. The Indian Air Force has also joined Operation Ganga. C17 aircraft have left for Romania to bring Indians crossing over from Ukraine. MEA ke sath पूरे कोऑर्डिनेशन के साथ ये ऑपरेशन चल रहा है कैपेसिटी इंक्रीज करने के लिए जैसे जैसे बिकॉज हमको सारे अपने सिटीजन्स मैनी ऑफ देम जो स्टूडेंट्स हैं उनको लाना है सो प्राइमरी सी सेवेंटीन करेंगे जो डायरेक्ट जा सकता है यूक्रेन हैज शट इट्स एयर स्पेस फॉर सिविल इन फ्लाइट इंडिया इज इवेक्यूएटिंग इट्स स्टैंडर्ड सिटीजन थ्रू पोलैंड हंगरी एंड रोमेनिया Over 3000 Indian nationals are still stuck in Kharkiv where Russia is pounding non-stop missiles. India has requested Russia for emergency evacuation of stranded Indians through Russian territory which is hardly 40 kilometers away. We have received the Indian requests for uh uh for the emergency evacuation of all those stuck there If Russia allows safe passage for Indian students Operation Ganga will get a huge boost Right now the government is racing against time as it tries to evacuate every single Indian from Ukraine before the big Russian blitz With Polomi Sahan Geeta Mohan in New Delhi Bureau Report India Today As we drive through Kiev you're looking at these multiple barriers checkpoints and roadblocks that are being set up and almost every roadblock is manned either by the Ukrainian army the militia civil defense territorial army or locals with nothing more than molotov cocktails and this shows you how this is a stand that's been taken by the people that they will not give up without a fight but the problems that are being faced in kharkiv intense shelling second day of intense shelling how difficult is it for children to come out of kharkiv my colleague nabila jamal spoke to some of the students trapped in kharkiv we bring you this report Ashwin, you're at one uh, area where there's a lot of commotion. We understand that you're trying to help many of the students board buses and get to uh, railway stations. Trains are running full. Where are you? Show us what's behind you. Actually, I'm in Lviv. Hello. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Uh, I reached Lviv in the morning, and uh, when we get get out uh, get out of the train, we saw so many juniors standing here. They don't have they don't have an idea to where to go, which border they should head, and how to go. Like there are so many taxi drivers here. They were charging so much fee, and they didn't okay. even have some money to give and go. So okay. we were helping them out from morning till now. Okay, uh, we made so many people into Kharkiv. Yeah, we 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 came Kharkiv to live yesterday in the afternoon. How did you manage to step out? After the heavy explosion, we just booked a taxi with our own risk. We took the risk and we came to uh, the railway station and we could. We got the train only after afternoon. We got the train. We came in the morning. We waited for so long. Okay. Can and you can you show us what's behind you? Uh, where are you? Are you in a safe zone? How many people? How many yeah. students are with you? So now, can now, you show now. us what's behind you? <laughs> yeah. See, we managed to help around uh, 56 students to get inside this bus. As well okay. as we arranged so many taxis as well as many vans for them to the border. Right. The, you, you know, Ashwin, we know. We, you know you the do thing know is, that, uh, no. Just uh, let me tell you something. No agents, no embassies helping us to you know get out of the bunker. Okay, no one is helping. Literally, the students are taking their own risk. Understand that. 
No, we we do we definitely know that this this is what students have done. They you know taken uh, risk and stepped out of your bunkers and managed to reach the border areas. It was at your own risk, and that's what uh, we understand many other students have done. In fact, Shristi also uh, experienced this. And Shristi, please uh, show us what's around you. We understand that you're in a safe zone right now. You're in Romania. You're at a you're at yes, ma'am. I'm in Romania, Romania now. Yeah, I'm at embassy camp. Like they are uh, helping us in so many ways. Like they are providing us food. We so, yeah, are show you. Okay, please, please uh, tell us how you managed to reach yeah. there, uh, Shristi. They they are providing us food and uh, this is sh shelter. It's it's a basketball uh, court and uh, okay. They provided us blanket, bed, okay, water, mm -hmm. and many mm -hmm. snacks and all things. Mm -hmm. And they are helping us, uh, like they are informing about uh, flights and all things. Like they told okay. us that uh, we uh, as students. Uh, hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ashish, me, hello. We can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you, Ashish. Yeah. It's, See, snow, so it's snowing here. It's snowing here, yeah, so Ash they told us that like uh, flights can't land on airport, so uh, we have to wait till tomorrow. Okay. So, so who's organizing this? What you show uh, show us what's behind you and tell us who's organizing that. Is that organized by the Indian like government? Local people. Lo no, no, okay. no, no. Local people Romanian are arranging it. Yeah, we know many students are stuck. In fact, Shaju uh, joins us, whose daughter yeah. is also in Ukraine currently, who's stuck there. Shaju, yeah. have you managed to have a word with uh, Alina, your daughter? Oh. And where where is she now? What's the situation? I, I know sentiments are running high right now. Yeah, she's. I'm in touch with her. Uh, she somehow managed, uh, her group managed to come out of their hostel. The so, embassy is not doing anything. Like, we uh, personally booked the booked bus and came from Kiev to Lviv and Lviv to Romania border. We personally booked the buses. And not, not a single person is helping us. Students are taking their own risk. She understand there are so many other students who are stuck inside there in the bunker in Kiev as well as in Kharkiv. They don't have a, have a single idea of what to do. Mm. They are afraid. Um, even at railway station, they are not allowing Indians to enter in uh, train. Prime Minister Narendra Modi called a high-level meeting after an Indian student was killed in the crossfire between Russian forces and Ukrainian forces in Kharkiv. The Prime Minister has directed the government to speed up evacuation of Indians trapped in Ukraine. Now, this is a task that's easier said than done because there's intense firing and shelling that's on, not just in Kharkiv, but also in Kherson, in Sumy, in some other pockets. Those who are succeeding in reaching Kiev are being evacuated to uh, the Lviv border and from there either to Poland or Hungary. There are multiple other places uh, that these students can go once they reach Kiev safely. But the biggest fight, the biggest challenge is just to get out of the strife torn area. We bring you this report. Panicked because there are some of our friends who went out and bring uh, like when the uh, actually the supply is very short and we have to go out for food and water. So it's like we are literally scared and don't know what to do. So here we've been here since 11:30 and the Ukrainians are not letting us in the train. Two trains have passed and we still have not got into the train. So please help us. Here the situation is very critical. Like we can't get food and water supply properly. Now we just went out to take just food and water but no water is available yahan pe condition bahut kharab hai aur hum log sab basement mein chupe hue hain kyunki yahan par continuously bomb bomb gir rahe hain aur firing ho rahi hai khane peene ka bahut hi limited saman hai they are many hundreds of kilometers away from the nearest exit routes stranded in kharkiv they are literally at the other end of the country from where rescues are actually happening but in the hellish landscape of Ukraine's second largest city, thousands of stranded Indians are just 40 kilometers from another country, Russia. With the code red situation becoming more urgent with each passing minute, is there a possibility that India can get President Putin to ensure safe passage across the border into Russia and out of the crossfire? where exactly Kharkiv is. It is far away from the western borders where most of the rescue effort is currently 
concentrated. So this is Kharkiv where the Indian student uh, Naveen Shekharappa was killed. It is far away from the western border where things are actually happening. Take a look at this now. This is where Kiev is. This is the capital of Ukraine. This is Kharkiv. Uh, which is in the northeastern part of Ukraine. And remember, most of the rescue efforts are happening around this particular area. That's where all the exits are taking place from of Indian students. But if you look at Kharkiv here, the closest border is Russia. Could that be one of the exit routes? Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a high-level emergency meeting on Tuesday night in the wake of India's first fatality. Sources say that with the situation in Ukraine deteriorating rapidly and with the impossibility of fully ensuring the safety of students as they try to make their way hundreds of kilometers across the country from east to west. Could the Russian en route be the simplest and most risk-free? Russia border 40 kilometers from Kharkiv route from Kharkiv to Russian border controlled by Russia. Exit via Russia would ensure fastest escape. India can use diplomatic heft with Russia to ensure safe passage. As the blood of an innocent student makes the Ukraine crisis very much an Indian problem, the safety over thousands of students, especially over 3,000, still in Kharkiv, a top priority. Will the Modi government push for a quick escape route across the Russia border? The time is running out. Bureau Report, India Today. Russia is warning the North Atlantic Treaty Organization countries of a nuclear conflict should they get involved in the Ukraine-Russia war. But the situation is extremely grim. Ukraine desperately requires a lot of military hardware that North Atlantic Treaty Organization countries have promised Ukraine not just fighter jets, maybe 70 additional fighter jets, anti-tank guided missiles, surface-to-air missiles, arms and ammunition. But there is a stern warning that has come from Russia's way. Despite this warning, West is not getting militarily involved in this conflict, but they have imposed a series of sanctions on Russia. Are these sanctions working? We attempt to find out in this report. We have proven our strength. We have proven that. At a minimum. We are exactly the same as you are. So do prove that you are with us. Do prove that you will not let us go. While Russian artillery pounds and pulverizes targets in Ukraine, the West has let its dogs of war loose on the Russian economy. It's been seven days since President Vladimir Putin's troops crossed the border into Ukraine. Since then, a slew of sanctions aimed at crippling the Russian economy have been announced. The United States Department of Justice is assembling a dedicated task force to go after the crimes of the Russian oligarchs. We're joining with European allies to find and seize their yachts, their luxury apartments, their private jets. We're coming for you, ill-begotten gains. The big sanctions against Russia include freezing assets linked to Putin, his top officials and their families. Even the Swiss have shed their historical neutrality to freeze the assets. Freezing of nearly $300 billion in Russian foreign exchange reserves held in Western nations. Cutting several Russian banks off from the secure global payments messaging system, SWIFT ban on transactions with Russian Central Bank and the Russian National Wealth Fund. Complete freeze on technology transfer to Russian companies. Halting of the certification of the strategic Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline by Germany. And airspace closure by Europe, US and Canada. The immediate impact on Russia has been brutal. Ruble tumbled 40% against the US dollar. Interest rates were hiked to 20% to contain the fallout. A Russian dictator of fa invading a foreign country 
has cost around the world. And I'm taking robust action to make sure the pain of our sanctions is targeted at Russian economy. The private has also joined in punishing Putin. BP and Shell have announced exit from their Russian joint ventures. Visa and MasterCard have blocked Russian financial institutions. Apple and Google have restricted access to their app stores in Russia. Passenger and cargo airlines have suspended services to Russia. Boeing has stopped servicing and providing spare parts for Russian airlines. World's three top shipping services, Maersk, CMA and MSC have suspended deliveries to Russia. Facebook is demoting posts from Russian-owned media. FIFA and Formula One have suspended Russia for now. While the West may not be deploying foot soldiers against the Russian military columns in Ukraine, its boardroom machinations have opened a new front, changing the face of future wars forever. Bureau Report, Business Today TV. A lot has been written about the Ukrainian President Zelensky and his stand against a very powerful Russian President Vladimir Putin. But this story is not about President Zelensky. This story is about how the First Lady of Ukraine, Olena, extremely influential on social media platforms, is motivating people in her country to join that fight, to unite and take on the Russians. Take a look. As the world watches Ukraine and Russia taking center stage, along with Russian President Putin, is President Zelensky, the leader of Ukraine. Former comic stepping up in true statesman like fashion to defend his homeland. In a series of public messages, Zelensky garnering world admiration, choosing to stay put in Ukraine, calling himself as Russia's target number one and his family, his wife, and their two children, target number two. But who is his wife? The First Lady of Ukraine. She is Olena Zelenska, 44, screenwriter by profession and classmate of Zelensky. Once opposed to her husband's political aspiration, she now his closest ally, by his side in hiding, refusing to leave the country or her husband. Widely popular, Zelenska, whose English is flawless, is considered one of Ukraine's most influential women. A fashion icon in her country, she has been the cover girl of many fashion magazines. Like her husband, she has rooted her social media presence with a 2 million following on Instagram to speak with the people of her country in these war torn times. On the 1st of March, when Kharkiv was facing the full brunt of Russian assault and capital Kyiv was bracing for a massive Russian military operation, Olena saluted the women of Ukraine with this post. In another Instagram post, on 25th February, she wrote alongside an image of an Ukrainian flag. She said, My dear people, Ukrainians, I am looking at you all today. Everyone I see on TV, on the streets, on the internet. I see your posts and videos. And you know what? You are incredible. I am proud to live with you in the same country. Today, I will not have panic and tears. I will be calm and confident. My children are looking at me. I will be next to them and next to my husband and with you. I love you. I love Ukraine. In another post of a picture of a baby born in a Kiev shelter, she wrote, We are the army. The army is us. And children born in bomb shelters will live in a peaceful country that has defended itself. While Ukraine marks one of its worst chapters in history, no matter what the outcome of this war, in decades from now, the sepia-tinted images of the first couple of Ukraine 
will always be revered as the brave gritty ones who did their people their land proud bureau report india today the attack on kiev is imminent and the national capital of ukraine is bracing for this attack india today reports from ground zero but that is all cameraman pavan kumar and i have for you on this special broadcast from kiev ukraine many thanks for watching for all the latest news and updates stay with us